Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your home is going into foreclosure, and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases, even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable, organized timeline. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. It's a great start to the year with lots of uh, excellence in broadcasting just being displayed all over the country. I'm very excited. Oh, yes. This one, of course, in Alabama. And, uh, well, this was uh, a station in Alabama, radio station covering the national championship Monday. And, of course, it wasn't good for Alabama. Uh, And they accidentally aired a commercial that was meant to sound live for Alabama's national championship gear. And it talked about their incredible victory over the Clemson Tigers. It's, It's one of those ones where, like, you hear, like, a guy, he's on. It sounds like the whatever radio personality they have at that radio station. He's on the phone. He's like, "Come join us. We're at this place celebrating the big win." And he probably did two oh, versions. Oh boy! And whoever was running the equipment back at the station played the wrong version. Yeah, uh, and that's embarrassing because not only did Alabama lose, they got crushed. Andrew Roberts coming to you once again from Academy Sports and Outdoors, John Hawkins Parkway in Hoover. Many Bama fans coming through, getting all of their title apparel. What a great win over Clemson for the Crimson Tide. The sixth title in 10 years. Truly amazing. Your title gear is here at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Landon Roberts for Jocks 94.5. Whoops. Yeah. Uh, I think it's actually at a different country now, that gear. Yeah, sure. (laughs) Worn by kids. Yeah. So, there you go. Go so he wasn't there, and he said he was there. Unbelievable! What if he was there, but now he's just there? Hey, come join us. Yeah, drowning our sorrows. Yeah. Do you think he had? If they lost, was he going to still be there? Yeah, I don't think so. What are they selling at that point? Nothing. <laughs> right? They don't have. They don't have a loser shirt. Do the non championship <laughs> gear. Yeah. <laughs> nice effort shirt. Yeah. I <laughs> participation trophies. Right? Yeah. I, I think that's probably what. I, I bet it was recorded. He was going to be there, and then they just canceled it. Once they canceled it, probably after the oh. first half, <laughs> they were like, "This is done. I'm. We're forget about this." I always sometimes you hear that like on something like the sports stations. I'll be driving, and you, you'll hear like on like on a weekend or the overnights, and you can just hear whatever they're setting up for Monday's broadcast is obviously pre-recorded because it's like very vague. Like yeah. we're going to talk about the Hawks game. Yeah, it doesn't say how awesome it was or how no. bad it was. It's like okay, yeah. And that's the danger. You could do two different versions, yeah. But that was that's what's going to happen if you do. So it's better just to do the vague thing, yeah. Because that way, no, no, you know, no moron back at the station will play the wrong one, and you look and you look bad. That dude looks bad, and not the guy who played it, right? Join yeah. us Monday. We'll talk about the Hawks game. Yeah, exactly. We'll talk about that incredible or not so incredible Hawks. Victory or loss. It'd be great if they just were fully transparent. Look, we don't know. I pre-recorded this before everything. Yeah. So maybe you're going to... Hey, if they won, come join me. I'm going to have gear for the sale. If they lost, I'll be at a bar getting wasted because I'm pissed. Jimmy Fallon's really good with that because uh, obviously, you know, he tapes his show in the in, in the afternoon. Yeah. So he'll go, so the, yeah, the, the, the Grammys were earlier tonight. <laughs> but, you know, he has no idea what happened. Yeah, just break that fourth wall. Yeah, that's awesome. Got to talk about Nick Herbert. Um, he was sick of his 13-year-old son, Ben, ignoring his texts. You know, that's the thing, man. You know, you get a, you got a 13-year-old. You're pretty much paying for his phone. You want to make sure that when you text your kid, he responds because you're the one paying. Mm-hmm. It's my dime. So he decided to develop an app. He's a project manager. So Nick said, all right, I'm going to develop an app that will hijack a phone. So that's exactly what it did. This hijacks his kid's phone, sounding an alarm and covering his screen until he responds. Oh, man. Wow, that's a little, uh, wow. It's all psycho. Yeah, that is. That's very psycho. I need to know where you put my cigarettes and until you respond to me. Wow, this app is called Reply ASAP. It is available for Androids, not yet for iPhones, and it has been downloaded over 75,000 times since he launched it in August of last year. Uh, there is an iOS version in the works. I, I, yeah, I still think that's a bit much. I mean, it, it definitely could be used for evil. 
Yeah. I mean, I can only imagine like some of my buddies, like my, like we have a group chat myself and my buddy Munson and our buddy Jay. And, and if, if Jay doesn't respond quick enough, we will. I mean, I'll sometimes even lose track. Munson will just write the word Jay maybe 700 times. Oh, wow. And I'll just look at my phone like, I have 700 unread texts. How the hell did that happen? And it's just a string of J's. Like, when are you going to answer my question? Oh, if we have this app wow. and we can just shut Jay's phone down until he answers. That would be... And it's always something stupid like, hey, you're going to meet up with us for sushi? And if he doesn't get back to us right away, we all we just keep bugging him. Jay. Uh, Jay. Yeah. Yeah. Jay. yeah, dude, Jay. It's, it's really Jay. that. Jay. Jay. I can appreciate your side of that, though, because I have the same thing with Facebook message. So we'll, we'll have message groups. Uh-huh. And, you know, it's... And, and, if you at somebody on that, it'll definitely, you know, and you know their phone gets notifications. Right. You'll be like, look, you were, you're on. I can see you're on Facebook, and we, we have a, why can't you just answer us? You know, <laughs> so I, now we're going to annoy you until you do. Yeah, because there's always, it's always the same person. Yeah. You know, it's like, hey, or, or just in general, you know, you're, you're putting something together, and the same people don't respond. And you're like, well, we kind of need an answer. We gave you a week. Can you, come on, you like, know. And, here, just to show you this. Oh, man, dude, that's insane. Yeah, we'll just do this all day. Long. Oh wow! And I'll just keep going and going and going. I'm kind of glad I'm not friends with you guys. <laughs> no, if we had this app, we wouldn't have to do this. We could just shut down Jay's phone. Yeah, the thing is, though, some critics are saying this is a this is a misuse of power, buddy. Uh, one reviewer said, "quote I can assure you, controlling significant others will you uh, controlling significant others will use this." Although Nick said that this is unlikely, given that both parties have to agree to install reply ASAP, and users can be blocked. But well, then, uh, how did his kid his kid agree to this? Well, and also if you're in a control controlling relationship the controlling person might be able to like you know no you need to download this kind of a thing i can understand why people are a little weirded out by this app yeah yeah you're absolutely right yeah i just remember man i grew up in a time where nobody knew where we were Mm -hmm. and now this where parents want to just basically hijack your phone because they they want to know where you are why aren't you replying to their messages quickly it is such a different mindset as a parent i think it's kind of that weird you see so many awful things happening on the news and i don't think it's happening any more than it was when you were younger i just think that we are exposed to a lot more so we think that there's danger on every corner when it's probably just as bad or as good as it was you know a hundred years ago when you were a kid. Yeah, and that, uh, it was 80 years ago, Vicky. Oh, okay. And, and you know, it, that's not good. That really isn't good for for people to have that kind of level of worry when, like, Vicky's got a point. It may not be any worse than it ever was. Oh, yeah. So you just want that instant response because yeah. now everyone knows you have your phone in your pocket and you know everybody's always on their phone. So when someone doesn't respond, you're like, how dare that person? I know you saw it. And everyone becomes psychopaths. And now we've got apps where you can shut down people's phones. And one texter says there used to be an app called SMS Bomb that would text as many Many times as you said it to 20 30 50 it was awesome oh man am i glad i never knew anybody that had that oh all right i have a question what is i should not what is this is actually a who who is doo butt <laughs> and why was he arrested <laughs> uh no that would be rev come on hey steve's got the news for you at 6 17 bj and mix mornings on the rock 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. Most fifth graders have a better grasp of the English language. Unfortunately, there aren't any available this early in the morning. This is News with Steve Miggs. Well, thanks, guys. Thanks to Kia of Puyall for giving us news and sports. And I wanted to bring Uncle Chris in the room for today's special holiday. Because oh, really? today is... National Word Nerd Day. Oh, he's the guy. This is your day. Finally, my lexicon pays off. Uh, Oh, I didn't know you drove a lexicon. I instantly regret bringing him into the room. Isn't that a bad guy? From Superman? No. Uh, Uncle Chris, it's Word Nerd Day. Give us a word. All right. The word of the day is behest. Behest. Can you use it in a sentence? I came in the room today at your behest. Thanks a lot, Chris. Really appreciate you coming yeah. in. And happy word. Whose idea nerd. was this? Because this was not Mine. clear through me. Terrible. Uh, next yeah. time I'll run it right by. I bring it up also because apparently in, uh, they, they put out this uh, linguistics department in Lake Superior State University in Michigan just put out a list of the most obnoxious, overused, and just plain terrible words that we need to banish. Oh, Fleek. Sh- Get no. rid of Fleek. Well, that's <laughs> awesome. Everybody got rid of Fleek three years ago, but BJ has refused to get rid of it. That's because I'm on Fleek. Ah, here's one. Do you guys know what yeet is? No. Uh, is that a breast? 
No, that's uh, that starts with the letter T. Oh, this sorry. Why? Ah, no, I don't know what it is. Slang term for throwing something. I'm gonna yeet it. I see people post yeet, yeah. and I never knew what it meant, but. It doesn't seem to correlate with what people are posting. I always thought it meant like beat down or something. They're like, I'm about to, I was about to yeet my kid when he scared me. Oh, I always thought it was like kind of like woot. Oh. Like, yeet? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> like throwing something like a party or throwing something like a ball? Like throwing something. Like oh, actually, you know, I don't know. It doesn't say. It just says slang term for throwing something. The one I've seen was this woman got scared by her son. She's like, I almost yeeted him across the room. Oh, all right. That sounds like a toss. Yeah. Okay. We yeet. All right. Uh, yeah, get yeah, rid of that let's word. Let's get rid of that one. Yeah. Ghosting. I think they're, they're saying it's, it's a little overplayed at this yeah. point. But that's Vicky's ghosted. whole life. She ghosts me all the time. Exactly. Why are you talking to me? What about wheelhouse? Oh no! What? It's in my. That's in my wheelhouse. <laughs> See that they're kind of done with that one. Wow, that's one of our old classics. Classic. And uh, Otis acronyms like President of the United States, so POTUS. Oh yeah. First Lady of the United States, Flotus. <laughs> <laughs> I do like to call her Flotus. See, then we'd have to give it a Scotus. And I like that one because I always think it's, it's. I always think it's saying scrotum. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's scrotus. And as far as I'm concerned, as far as I'm concerned, sometimes those Supreme Court people are like scrotums. <laughs> well, you know what? One word they're not going to get rid of, which I think is pretty awesome, is the word doo doo butt. And there's a story yeah, that involves doo-doo-butt. the word doo doo butt. It happened in Baltimore, and there was a man that was arrested. He was a wanted fugitive. Fugitive. His name is Anthony Ward. He's 21 years old, but apparently. He's known as Doodoo Butt. Yeah. The best part about this story is, okay, that's a very weird nickname, yeah. but some news uh, group in, um, you know, a news station in Baltimore, the anchor decided, you know what? I like that term, Doodoo Butt, and I'm going to use it as much as possible when I talk about this story. It appears that a 21-year-old Baltimore man, known by the alias Doodoo Butt, was arrested <laughs> for a road rage-style shooting. Okay. Ward, a.k.a. Doodoo Butt, was yeah. wanted for first-degree murder and was arrested in Pennsylvania on a Maryland warrant. No word on how he got that alias. Well, I'm pretty sure I know. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I know too. I yeah. guess you know if I was nicknamed Doo Doo Butt, I'd probably be a little uh, a little yeah, on edge. <laughs> yeah. I'd get a little road rage. I don't know if I'd shoot somebody. Yeah, at least not from the front end. And then what? You go to jail, and they're like, "Oh, this is your new inmate, Doo Doo Butt." I think that would be a great name to have in jail because maybe that would no. Just, that's like an invitation. Oh, really? I okay. That big dude, dude. Oh, you mean do? I was thinking of you know the other version, no, which, would, which would discourage me from wanting to even be involved with that guy. No, I think we're flipping the script in, in oh, prison. Oh, okay. It's more enter as opposed to exit. Oh, okay. Wow. All right. Hey, everyone, have a good day. <laughs> yeah. Happy word nerd day, doo doo butt. Yeah. Oh, well, there's a teacher in Ohio in a little bit of trouble because well, apparently it's not okay to take care of yourself behind your desk. In a classroom while students are present. Oh, for crying out loud, you can't do anything in this country. I mean, what in the hell is? And it's a substitute teacher. Yeah, it seems to be oh, the issue. Well, that's we've we've had some great substitute teacher stories. Yesterday we had a story about doo doo butt. Yeah, we Remember did. A substitute teacher that got mad at the principal and decided to smear doo doo everywhere, all over, all over the birthday party scene at a park. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is a, a, a teacher by the name of Tracy. Okay. And uh, yeah, he was caught taking care of himself. Wow. In class, they had to remove him from the building, and they wow. said, he will not be returning to our schools. There's a shock. Yeah, at that point, how do you ever get another job? You're basically the Pee Wee Herman of teaching. Yes. How do you ever get a job again? You're not getting a job reference, that's yeah. for sure. No one's Jeez. recommending you for a future gig. I mean, you know, really, you just behind the desk and go, here's an idea. That is weird. Yeah, that's, yeah. 41 years old, too. Oh, well, all right, that makes sense, then. Uh, some border ag- uh, security agents in Singapore just busted a 45-year-old smuggler last week. And the reason why they were able to bust him, he was, I guess, smuggling four kittens. And they started noticing that the bulge in his pants started meowing. Oh, really? So they're like, yeah, what's wow. going on in your pants? Yeah, I mean, all right. He could face a year in jail for trying to do that. You're smuggling kittens in your pants? That yes. gives you a year in jail? I guess in, in uh, Singapore it does. Wow, they're, I mean, they're canning you over there. You got a year in jail just for being an idiot? I would think... Putting kittens in your pants, and if it can go wrong, those kittens decide they want to get comfortable. How does that? I mean, I don't want any of those kittens anywhere near my gynecology area. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure why that person thought that was a good idea. And uh, apparently, they're saying that it looks like Seahawks kicker Sebastian Janikowski might have played his last NFL game. And that's according to some reports. So. Yeah, we're not surprised. Yeah, it did not look good for him. He's 40 years old. He's not under contract for next season. And of course, just suffered a, uh, an injury that put him out of the game. 
during the playoffs against Dallas. So this is like the revolving door. It's like the dark arts teacher in Harry Potter. Are we going to get a full-time kicker to stay with us for a while or what? That was a reference. I have no idea what you meant. Well, it just meant basically every year was always somebody different. Oh, okay. But yeah. that, that, that person that was someone who's large in his jersey and drinks a lot. Oh, that's a whole different reference. Oh. But I mean, yeah, you know, I would, would imagine nice. maybe, maybe that's a, a draft pick that they're going to have to make. I don't know. Oh yeah, well or you, you know pick what? up someone that I would hope they pick up someone that's not known for just you know you don't go down that Blair Walsh road again. Yeah, yeah, and and look, it, it would be great. I mean, look, we 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 spent a pick on a pick a kicker last year, like a punter, and that worked out really well. Yeah. so that would be cool. As far as weather, fifty-one degrees and rain, and thank you, Amerigroup dot com, for giving us news and sports. And BJ, yeah, according to somebody, they say Kobe is for accuracy. Yeet is for distance. Oh, oh really? So is it based off of a basketball thing? Kobe. Oh, I thought Kobe like Kobe Bryant. Yeah. I have no idea. Is it from another language? I am I am completely lost. Kobe, oh, isn't that? Oh, Kobe is for what they said, accuracy? Kobe. I don't know if it's Kobe. Oh, so maybe it is based, it's, it's a slang based on Kobe Bryant. And uh, I don't know. I have no idea. That text is going to have to do more explanation. <laughs> I don't know if the texture is basing on something real or if, if you go, hey, man, I Kobe'd that, meaning that you're, you're really accurate with whatever you did because you're like Kobe Bryant. I don't know. Any, any luck, Ricky? Well, I also found out that if you, uh, the best way of throwing something and you actually, you know, combine the two together, it's a Yobi. What does that mean? I An don't know. Distance? I'm feeling so. Yeah, that's probably that's what it is. Old. Yeah, you, you 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 are super accurate, and you threw it for great I'm, distance. I'm having a hard enough time trying to figure out what the hell is a baby shark, and now I got to figure out what a yeet is. No, baby because we are, we're trying to ban that word. Remember, baby shark? No, yeet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's a good point. Did you see? A, it's already come and gone. I didn't even know what it meant. Exactly. I don't know what television it was on, what football game it was on, but they were showing just uh, uh, Mahomes just uh, just qu- qu- just th- doing the no look throw, yeah. and he's hitting ba- and he's hitting barrels. Yeah, yeah, dude. So he was Yobi in that, no doubt about it. Oh, don't start. There was accuracy oh, and no, distance. No, yeah, don't start. I'm Yobi in, no. man. I'm doing. Well, I, I have uh, Pat McAfee, you know, who does some good stuff with. Uh, now he used to be a kicker, and now he does like a barstool, I think, or he's moved on. He's also doing stuff in the WWE. He interviewed Matt Hasselback, and Matt said, "Yeah, a lot of quarterbacks have no look passes in their repertoire. Like you practice them, and you just have them ready just in case." And Matt was sharing a funny story of a time where he had one in his repertoire, but he, I think it was back when he was playing with Indianapolis, and he did his no look pass. The receiver didn't know it was coming. He's like, I'm doing my no look pass. He's like, I didn't know you were doing it. Oh man. That's that's a bummer if in fact you're able to do it and there and nobody knows it's coming and then and it hits you right where it's supposed to. But yeah, even against the Seahawks, he had that one no look that was just awesome. It is amazing that those guys can do that. Yeah. I mean, we, you know, we give them such a hard time and yet their skills are just unbelievable. And uh, I'm, I, I'm ex- I guess I'm kind of excited for football because of that. It looks like Mahomes is going to be, I bet a lot of people, for a lot of reasons, I think like with with, with uh, Vicky and Aquaman, I think, you know, a lot of people might think that Mahomes' kid's good looking, he's young, he's talented. I think a lot of folks are going to be loving that dude uh, when, when, this weekend when they play. I found a little more information on Yeet. Apparently, it started with like a dance craze thing that happened in 2014, and then it morphed into a ex- uh, term used to express excitement, especially used in basketball when someone has shot a three-pointer, and then it's just begun to kind of evolve from well, there. Well, that's where Kobe comes from then. It's mm-hmm. obviously a basketball situation. Yeah, and it's one of those things where they would uh, you know, basically throw a trash into the into the trash bin and you would just yell Kobe as you threw it and then they changed it to yelling Yeet as you threw it and oh that's how we it's got this the evolution of stupidity and now um, why do I know this oh, right? because well that's office see the office Olympics does involve of course you know the trash can in basketball so mm-hmm. I, that makes so sense. It says my 11 year old says Kobe every time he tosses something referring to Kobe Bryant which is funny, 11-year-olds referring to Kobe, who's no longer playing. Yeah, exactly. My favorite thing is that this went viral due to a kid named Lil Meatball. <laughs> Yo, Lil Meatball. Yeah. All right. Fantastic. Well, I, I, I love that. that. I'm, I'm, I'm checking out. Yeah. <laughs> One person says, good morning, crew. You know it's too early for this. Let's just stick with the simple double doink. Double doink. <laughs> <laughs> that's, how we got, that's how they lost. They lost to a double doink. Oh, yeah. It wasn't yeet enough? No, it was wasn't that working? working? It wasn't. And it actually also wasn't Kobe enough. Oh, my gosh. That, that was the problem. Though, he practices that way. And he's, you know, he actually practices to hit the uprights, we found out later on. Did that kicker for the, yeah. uh, whatever the hell team it was. The, the, the Bears. The Bears. Thanks, man. The Bears. The Bears. All right, here's a situation, man, that I don't know if I'm going to like. Turns out I might have to start tipping my flight attendant. Frontier Airlines for just what? <laughs> Wow! They don't do Rev. anything. They walk down an aisle and give you snacks. They bring you drinks. They're like waitresses and waiters in the air, Rev. Did Except you hear what everything is pre-mixed. They don't do anything. They protect your life. 
They don't do anything, dude. They are running up and down, collecting all your trash and, and, and giving you all your food. You don't. You just get to sit there. It's the greatest yeah. service ever. They come to you if you hit a button. Do they? Yeah, you well, hit yeah, that I never, I, I'm not good at finding that button, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we have heard. I, I, turn, I turn the light on. I just don't know what's going on. It's and like, I can't even reach it. So yeah, yeah. Uh, no, they. I That's mean, another problem. Too. Now, granted, I mean, uh, again, I fly Alaska, and uh, so uh, I, I, maybe I'm spoiled. But they, I, I, I mean, I don't want to have to tip them because they don't take cash on the airline anymore. They because they at the least they right. it's always credit card. That's going to slow things down because then they're going to have to. Give you the receipt with a pen, and you have to write in a number. Yeah, that's true. Unless they're going to do it now. Have you seen like some restaurants? There was, I think it's like oh, I can't remember the restaurant. It's right by Cactus in Bellevue. Oh yeah, the, I don't, I can't remember the name of the place, but it was a good place, good food. But they come by with like the a little handheld thing that you they give you like almost like an iPad. And you have to type you type in like you know how much you want to leave it leave as a oh, tip. Oh, that's a nice thing. But it's awkward if the waiter or waitress is just standing there. Oh, luckily our waitress she walked away, and I was like, that's cool. Like I respect that because it's awkward if they're just hovering over you watching you put in how much of a tip. Yeah, that's very out. awkward. Yeah, yeah. They they they're gonna say that the flight attendants on Frontier Airlines can accept tips. They are optional, but you'll be able to add one in when you order a drink or snack. Mm-hmm. The flight attendants union actually says they're against the policy. They say instead the airline should pay higher salaries. So tips aren't necessary. Yeah. yeah, I wondered about that. Is this the same route that the old the restaurants you yep. took all those years ago? Uh, right now, the average flight attendant salary is fifty thousand five hundred dollars a year. Man, it's just, I feel like we're just we're tip crazy. I'm all for helping people out, you know. But yeah. at some point, we gotta we gotta pump the brakes. Yeah, I agree. It's like you know because the companies are the ones that are basically screwing everybody over, and it, 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 you know you feel it, it puts you in an awkward situation. Are we supposed to tip the captain too? Then he's like the bartender. And See, that's that's, that's the guy. The well, restaurant. I hope he's not the bartender. That's the last <laughs> thing you want. Is captain going? Hey, everybody, who wants a drink? Not every bartender's drinking on the job, BJ. Oh yeah, some of them are responsible. <laughs> okay, fine. It wasn't me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I I'm a, I'm with you on that, Steve. I just feel like it adds too much. You know, I mean, it's bad enough that I, you know, I, I, I now I got to sit there and sign that thing too, or whatever. And then we're gonna have to tip the the, the TSA guys. As they unload our baggage. I mean, if you want your baggage to be handled properly. Oh, yeah. Well, that's, you know, if you don't want your stuff to be stolen, I'm willing to tip people for that. Oh, that pissed me off the one time I remember. I'll never do the curbside oh, bag yeah. check-in. Yeah, you were Some not guy sh- guilted me into tipping him. He's like, you He's like, you want to make... He basically said you want your bag to get where it needs to go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's me some cash. It basically feels like organized crime. You feel it like did, it's a sh- yeah. it does feel like a shakedown. It was like sort of typically people. I can't remember exactly what he said, but it was a not so subtle. I'm going to mess with your bag if you don't give me a tip. On the day of my daughter's wedding, you don't tip me for your bag. All right. Well, guess where your bag is not going to go, sir? Your final destination. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Steve. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I want to Kobe that bag. Oh, yeah, you gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, I know. All right, well, yesterday, our boy Steve over here, he did get this one wrong. What is the largest rodent in North America? Vicky. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to go with a rat. No. A gerbil. No. Okay, uh, you know what? I find your answers to be quite offensive. Since the real answer was beaver, I think you owe... All of us an apology. Sorry. Okay. Thanks. Deeply, deeply sorry. Oh, that's not the word to use. Um, uh, you want to shout at beating Steve 206 421 Rock? We're playing Beat Migs at 647 on The Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. What's the difference between filing for bankruptcy and credit counseling? Uh, credit counseling is a is a useful process in some circumstances, but it does show up on your credit. In fact, from a credit scoring standpoint, credit counseling shows up just like a bankruptcy, so it's going to affect your credit as negatively as filing bankruptcy. In credit counseling, the idea is, is that a credit counselor works with your creditors on your behalf to try to lower interest rates or work out payment plans with your creditors uh, to, to pay back your debt over time. Uh, in credit counseling, you almost always pay back 100% of the debt, sometimes at lower interest. And of course, some creditors will participate in that process and some won't. Um, so you're usually left with kind of a mixed uh, result with credit counseling and of course, a high payment. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening.